Welcome friends to part 27 of this series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in the previous video, we created our chat groups page as well as linking the data from our chat groups over here to our chat page. So in this video, we'll be seeing how we can allow the user to actually send messages inside this chat group and how we can display the messages over here. So let's see how we can do that right now. Alright, so let's review our database architecture once more. So we already have our messages table as well as our chats table over here. And for our messages table in particular, we can see that the messages table contains a chat ID column, which is a foreign key relation to our chats table. So this ensures that we can get all the messages that belong only to the specific chat group. And we also need the actual message text column. So this will store whatever is written in the message as well as the sender ID column over here, which is a foreign key relation to our user data table. So this is important since we need to know who sent the message. And with this sender ID foreign key relation, we also can join these two tables so that we now have access to all of our users information as well, such as their name or profile picture. All right, so going back into a Flutterflow app, we already created our messages table previously. So we don't need to do that again. And now we can actually add the functionality to send messages. So with this send icon button selected, we will open the action flow editor and we will search for superbase insert row. And we want to insert a new row into our messages table. Then we have to set some fields over here. We don't need to set the ID nor the created app, we just need to set these three fields, the chat ID, message text, as well as sender ID. So the chat ID will just be our chat row ID. Next, our message text will be from our widget state and it will be from our text field over here. Last but not least, the sender ID will simply be our authenticated user's user ID. So now this action actually allows our users to send messages and those messages will be stored as rows inside our messages table. So now the last functionality that we have to add is a way to show our messages inside this UI over here. All right, so first in our list view over here, we need to first fetch and get our data from our messages row via a super base query. So with the list view selected, we can go ahead to backend query and now we'll just add a query. And we'll add a super base query. The table that we want to query is the messages table and we want to get a list of rows as well. So for the filter over here, we need to filter where our chat ID is equal to our chat row ID. And for the ordering, we can specify the ordering as well. So we want the most recent chat message to appear at the bottom. So we can filter or we can rather order by creator that and increasing. So the most recent one will be at the bottom. We can confirm. However, you notice that now our sort of green text message bubble is gone because a list view will only generate data based on the first container over here. But we want our messages to appear in both styles. For other users messages, we want to, it to appear in this gray style. And for our own messages, we want to appear in that sort of green style just now. So how we can do that actually is we can, instead of having two different containers, we can actually wrap both of them in a conditional builder. A conditional builder allows us to take in a condition and based on that condition, it either shows the message container or our own message container. All right, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take our own message container. We want to cut this widget and we actually want to go ahead and place it inside this column first. So we'll place it there, we'll use it later. And then inside of our message container, we want to click on our message container and we'll wrap this widget inside of a conditional builder. And then we want to go to this else statement and we want to add a container inside of this. And then we can take our own message container, cut it, and then place it inside this L statement container. And then we can remove this container. 
So why I did it that way was because the conditional builder has some issues with just pasting the own message container inside it would view this own message container as sort of the whole page itself and it would cause a crash. So yep, that is it. So now, we can set a condition in this conditional builder over here. So the condition would be a single condition. And for the first value, we will choose our messages row. So we can check if our sender ID is equal to our authenticated users user ID or rather if it is not equal to our authenticated users user ID because if it's not equal to our user ID then we will show this other message container if not we'll show our own message container all right and last but not least is to actually link up the data inside our message itself so let's start with this profile picture first so if the circle image selected we'll choose this path and the path we can use the same one that we got from for this circle image over here so it will simply be our user data row profile picture and remember this is the profile picture of the other person and then next we can link up the message text as well so this will simply be changing the text our messages row and message text give it a default variable value then we can do the same thing for our own message container so make sure to toggle this conditional visibility to be true for this else statement so that we can edit it inside our UI. So do the same thing for this text over here. So messages row and message text. Now. And finally, there's one more thing that we have to take note of is that whenever we send a new message, we want to update our query inside this list view so that we are getting back the new message as well. So with the icon button selected, we want to open the action flow editor. And after we insert the new row, we have to refresh our database request so that our UI gets updated. And for the widget, we want to refresh it on our list view. And also one more thing that we can do is that whenever the page is loaded, we want it to automatically scroll to the bottom of our list view. So with our chat page selected, we can open our action flow editor. And when the page first loads, we can choose this scroll to action. And we can choose our list view. And we want to scroll to the end every time our page is loaded. All right, so that should be it. And we can go ahead and test our app in our test mode now. All right, so test has just loaded up and let's try chatting with Axolotl over here. So you can message Axolotl. You can see that we're brought to this chat page over here. And if I try typing in a message and send it, you can see that the message has been sent over here. Oh, and one thing that I realized is that we can actually, we should actually clear this message after we send it. So in our icon button, we can, after refreshing the database request, we can actually just go ahead and clear text fields. And we select our text field one. All right, so, oh, and I just realized we also did not add the functionality for this back button over here. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. So it's simply just navigating back. And if we go into our super base table under our messages table, you can see that a new message has been inserted over here with our chat ID of one and a new chat group also as well. But there is one more thing that we still have to do. Currently, there's no way of going into our chat groups page. So we can't see the chat groups over here. We also have not linked up the data in our chat groups page just yet. So that is what we'll be doing in the next video. And after that, we should be 100% done with the basic Instagram clone app. So I hope to see you in the next video.